Welcome in this edition of Kurukshetra. We'll be mainly talking about food storage and warehousing. So, what is the difference between e warehousing and the ordinary warehousing? So, e warehousing brings in a proper format and the rich the receipts would be generated. So, it is more uh, systematic, more official, and through that, providing loans by the bank is relatively easier, and negotiating by the farmers is again relatively easier for that. So, first we talk about for a uh, Vixit Bharat or developed India. 2047 we need to have good food uh, systems and storage systems in order to preserve the food which is uh, created also the public distribution system the minimum support price system has to be stringent private sector involvement must be increased for mainly the storage and delivery purpose so what are the key achievements of 2023 we are providing free food grains to more than 80 crore population of india procuring nearly 800 lakh million tons of food transferring uh, nearly rupees 2 lakh crores to paddy and wheat farmers distribution of fortified rice uh, to the beneficiaries gps based vehicle transport uh, tra uh, tracking system are some of the important landmarks now the statistics have been given here but the world's largest grain storage plan in cooperative sector has been implemented in the trial stage in various states across india also primary agricultural credit societies have been established which would provide loan for immediate needs agricultural uh, infrastructure fund marketing infrastructure fund mechanization funds etc have been developed under the garib kalyan yojana free food grains per year 5 kg per person of uh, priority house so 35 kg per family of antodaya anya yojana and then food security for every household is the idea a sustainable development goal can be achieved with this way forward and this would also empower farmers and the stakeholders in the same way now coming on to the warehousing the existing warehousing system needs to be refurbished and there have to be reserves uh, Uh, for the next um, seasons that has to be done for example wheat and paddy can go well for up to 4 years in warehouses but to have good warehouses we require optimum space proper handling dry conditions lack of humidity good quality uh, systems to be generated and infrastructural facility above all that has to be generated so at present we do not have a strong robust storage system which is one of the major causes of distress sales and then once it is kept in the warehouse the things are kept in the warehouse there is a warehouse receipt which is issued to the person who deposits the thing in the warehouse now that warehouse receipt is a means of ownership of the goods which are lying in the warehouse against that 50 to 80% of it could be uh, considered for loan uh, against the cost of 50 to 80 percent of it could be considered for loan uh, by the bank but there are non negotiable warehouse receipts as well which are three step process after a mutual agreement a written notice by the warehouse operator or a confirmation from the operator that goods under the warehouse are in the possession of buyer within the warehouse so warehouse receipt system is important there is a depositor who brings the goods to the warehouse with the three types of cost which includes expense to the delivery of goods fees imposed by the warehouse and financing cost incurred from the bank then there is a warehouse man who takes care uh, weighs the things grades the things and assigns them specific places free of infestation and related hazards then there is a bank of financial institution which gives the loan against uh, the commodities which are kept in the warehouses and this would be 50 to 80% of the current market value of the stored product in the warehouses so insurance companies and testing agencies work in line with that there are also regulators who regulate the system of warehouse receipt system and then a uh, development and regulatory authority which does regular inspections checks out any grievances if they uh, there conducts the uh, the efficacy of the business checks the efficacy of the business so under the warehousing development and regulation act 2007 there has been a comprehensive receipt system around the negotiable warehouse receipts and this ensures that the responsibility is are fully assigned under the WDRA act and the responsibilities are in the best interest of the depositors if there are any offense that is uh, done that can be penalized or has to be penalized 
द अथॉरिटी टू मैनेज द पेरिशेबल एंड हेजार्डस गुड्स गोज टू द ऑपरेटर ऑफ द वेयर हाउस एंड देन देर इज एन एडवाइजरी कमेटी विच वुड टॉक अबाउट द रिकमेंडेशन फॉर इम्प्लीमेंटिंग सर्टन गाइडलाइंस ऑफ वॉट टू कीप एंड वॉट नॉट टू कीप सो अंडर द नेगोशियबल वेयर हाउस रिसिप्ट इट इज रेगुलेटेड बाय द स्टेटरी अथॉरिटी the receipts actually talk about the prescribed rules and then there are transfers which could be due to the regulatory backup so this talks about generation of electronic receipts which can help in sale exchange at enam and also for the banking and the loan purpose so these warehousing concepts are really really important and sebi has mentioned it that electronic negotiable warehouse receipts issued by the warehouse would be required for settling any commodity exchange for there on the next is food storage plan now there have been various primary agricultural credit societies across the country more than 1 lakh of those with 13 crore farmers involved and annual production of nearly 3000 uh, lakh farmers has to be part of it now this also has a system in gain where us brazil russia argentina ukraine france and canada have the storage capacity exceeding the amount of food grain which is produced but india has a challenge with the storage capacity our storage capacity is less than the amount produced so we need to have a mega plan now india definitely has 18% of the population but 12% of the land for cultivation so with this largest food program to action which was brought as national food security act 2013 we need to guarantee food security to the population uh for certain specific groups and the primary agricultural credit societies nationwide have been working forward with the various initiatives for the extensive grain storage plan along with the cooperative sector so government of india has sanctioned the scheme on trial basis within the cooperative societies now each of the ministry has certain uh, establishments under it for example ministry of agriculture and farmer welfare have agricultural infrastructure fund mission for integrated development of horticulture ministry of food talks about pradhan mantri kisan sampada yojana for consumer affairs and food distribution talks about national food security and msps to be uh, guaranteed but the challenges mainly lie with the cooperatives management and the food quality so there has to be an improvement in the storage facility either through a computerized real time monitoring system or uh, with better uh, supply of food grains maintaining better opportunities having proper uh, credit societies as some of the suggested solutions but there has to be also traditional storage infrastructural facilities which are really important and cost effective in india for example in andhra pradesh there are pits these are rectangular pits in open spaces with hay and clay and they are sealed with mud and this is one of the ways to store routinely the uh, the produce in the regions of andhra pradesh a traditional way uh, this whole area is coated with cow dung and decorated with rangoli bukhari is one such way through which plaster made of mud and straw is used and to protect it from uh, moisture a polythene bag is put mora in the rural area is an inverted cone structure where paddy maize and jowar is stored the height of the bamboo uh, split actually is taken into account and that should match the height with the structure and then there is um uh, gradual tapering which is done so conical roofs uh, overhanging are installed and these are positioned in such a way that rat proofing can also be done for all the four pillars around uh, up to 1.5 meters kothar in the northern regions store mainly paddy maize sorghum wheat and barley the storage capacity is 3 to 35 9 to 35 tons and the roof is constructed of corrugated metal sheets which is inclined uh, and overhung from all the sides similarly there are cylindrical grain bins rectangular grain bins bharola as one such a structure which is shaped like an egg has a capacity of 40 to 80 kg of food grain coop for storing chaff and wheat straw which can be used as fodder now this is in a circular structure with straw and sticks crib is constructed of bamboo wood and metal wires and this is again rectangular structure uh, the legs are rat proof so that rat cannot damage it kanja is used for um, storage made by bamboo again and it prevents the spillage around sanduka is similar to a sanduk so it has uh, sections or cabins in it where different grains could be stored and there can be 3 to 12 quintals which could be stored now 
better handling of the grains is required for that proper timely harvesting prematurely harvested crop should be identified there has to be uh, a check on the pedi harvesting and the delay if there and the method should not only reduce the yield of the uh, grain loss but also yield should actually be more cleaner by 90% that's the basic idea now for the food storage system there are various entrepreneurial opportunities that have been brought forward and brought in light for the same so what could be the ideas the schemes for generating food parks cold chain storage processing backward forward linkages infrastructure as some of the ideas so for that pest management processing units um, the use of information and communication technology in storage supply of energy are some other methods that have to be taken into account and significantly at the same time reducing the burden of greenhouse gas now making india the world's food basket is important we are second largest in terms of wheat and rice but we are still moving forward with millets and other horticulture producers to have a better ranking globally we have a significant contribution of 40% from pearl millet which is bajra 8% from sorghum which is jowar in the total production the major states are rajasthan karnataka maharashtra up haryana and gujarat and these states contribute to nearly uh, 83% of the total production so under the unga um, uh, submit 2023 was designated as the international year for millet and with this the popularization of millet had grow glo had grown globally even the institute of uh, indian institute for millet research has brought in many developments for the same the next is food processing units under the food processing uh, it's basically value addition to the food grain so agricultural surplus employment generation and compensation to growers are some of the major aspects of it then packaging is another industry which is uh, related to it a proper food supply chain has to be developed and identified standards have to be identified now these standards include establishment of sanitary and photosanitary agreements under wto which increases the adoption of food safety measures the ability to assess the world markets one district one product concept where every district district would bring in one specific product and that would be marketed so with this there are various government schemes that have been sanctioned with 137 various products across 700 districts in 35 states so identifying those bringing those into action has been important generating the loans for the same and identifying the various self help groups associated to it the next is the initiative of the government for farmer produce self help and cooperatives have been important and under that the pm's formalization for uh, the food processing enterprise is really important to provide technical assistance the one district one product as we already mentioned through the gis mapping user friendly technologies value chain uh, value addition can be done to this system and uh, better developments can be brought for employment entrepreneurship and so on the next is institutionalization of the management a better food security uh, which can be taken care by the food cooperation of india storage operations of the food grain where uh, the non perishable food grain like wheat and rice are characterized by low moisture low ph and they can be stored for a prolonged duration of time the storage capacity in the central pools can also be increased through the private entrepreneurship guarantee scheme involving ppp model now to preserve the food grains there has to be a regular aeration categorize the food grains classify it disinfect it and liquefy the stocks as and when required so here what is required is the dampness in the walls and the floor should be removed rat proofing should be done um, there has to be ingress and egress of the trucks uh, which has to be correctly positioned waste disposal has to be taken into account so fci gives in guidelines and mandates which gives in a uh, proper remuneration to the farmers maintaining a buffer stock and also bringing in stabilization of the pricing so with technology we can definitely reduce the losses and there is external stakeholder that can actually take into account and guarantee the developments in that line also on an average a food grain bag 
covers a distance of about 1200 kilometers in the country so with this we need to strengthen the supply chain and bring in more fair price shops which could have better uh, facilities and better streamlined systems for uh, storage crack free rigid floor is important if it is um, the truck the plinth should be 80 centimeters above the ground if it is rail loading it should be 106 centimeters above and therefore those are the plinth guidelines then we have the platform width which is required adequate ventilation the ventilation guidelines are required here the span of the steel structure for the roof is again identified for the bulk storage silos are developed you have a hopper bottom silo which cleans the bottom itself so you don't need a separate shovel for cleaning it it has an inbuilt self-cleaning mechanism covered and plinth storage we have phased out method in fci has been cost effective and a temporary storage where wheat is used mainly during the harvest season uh, from the procuring estates and here a wooden frame or dungeon is positioned on a plinth and this entire thing is covered with a polythene sheet of 100 uh, from 800 to 1000 gauze in thickness and this technique is known as cover and plinth now this had been widely used in india for storage to prevent it from flooding from the leakage from the spill of the water from the drainage systems or the canal water reaching it and this is constructed this plinth is constructed with brick and mortar at a height of nearly uh, 15 centimeters above the ground also it has employed anti-termite treatment mechanism to ensure that um, termite attack is not there on the crops so those are some of the important things that we have discussed in this edition of kurukshetra this edition of kurukshetra becomes extremely important in light of the recent farmer agitation not only in india but even in countries like romania france germany and so on so it's a global phenomena including albania where we have seen farmers coming onto roads bringing in issues related to um, their rights and so on so these things have become really important to storage the warehouse storage act really really important for your prelims as well as mains in the upcoming examination so wish you all the best and in case you have any questions or queries feel free to drop us an email uh, or post in the comment below thanks for joining in have a wonderful day